You're getting a sneak peek into the acting process. Watch and learn. Watch the master. And action! This is what I like to do right before a take. Just focus up. Just be thinking about nothing except for the character. And then when it comes time to do it, I'm fully in that room. Hola, Carmen, ¿cómo estás? 73, take two. My blouse has come outside of my pants. Director spoke. Give me a note. So I'm going to do something totally opposite of what I was doing. I'm going to change gears and do a totally different performance. Get out of my grill. Singing at the party. I sneak in past the guards and then I sing inside the party. I'm not supposed to be here, but I'm singing at the party. No one never stopped me from not singing at the party. So is this a C, C, is this a C, 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 Well, we heard uh, about a story about a, a real man, a real Mexican priest who was a priest by day and a Mexican wrestler by night, and that so struck our imagination that um, we decided we wanted to sort of make a, a movie about that. So we immediately thought of Jared, because we love Napoleon Dynamite. But we heard that Jared had passed on everything that had been pitched to him for you know a year after Napoleon Dynamite. So we sent it in anyway, and he, he liked it. We started just brainstorming a little bit, and our agent also said, maybe you should write this with someone. And we were really open to the idea, because we were kind of exhausted from you know the Napoleon, the whole thing. And so he was like, you should, you should think about Mike White. This product, not the Libre. It's a story of Mike White trying to resuscitate his flagging career. So he assembled the coolest people in town to party with him. It's also the story of a put upon slop cook who wants to be a a famous wrestler, but his religious beliefs get in the way of his dreams. I mean, literally, like within a week, it was like Jack wanted to do it, and Jack's partner was Mike White, and Jerusha and Jared wanted someone to write with them, and so we feel like, you know, matchmakers, like we created this perfect marriage. Uh, at night I go to sleep, I play my games, I think around me. toward camera. <laughs>
Jack, que es súper bueno, me gusta su trabajo y, y se divierte muchísimo con las películas. El guión es fantástico, súper padre. El director es un bombonzazo, este, hasta ahora de lo que hemos visto, dirige muy, muy, muy bien a, a los actores y tienen pues, un gran elenco, ¿no? Desde Esqueleto, Nacho, todos están increíbles, súper padre. Why not? Because it'll go too high. It has to go up high, or other people will see it coming out the edge. No. No? Well, can we just start by uh -huh. just placing, other than snorting? Yes. I will not snort, I will just place. It is especially delicious. Supposed to, it's supposed to happen today. I don't know. We're just having more fun. We're having more laughs. And you know how the director of a movie runs the show, kind of steers the ship? Well, this director's really funny. Every day you're just like, wait, what is going on here? And you know, it comes true. Jack will be covered in pigeons after lunch.
to get a flavor. Oh, oh yeah, and I, I tried to learn Spanish. How do you feel here in Mexico? Mi español es fluido. Sí. Es mejor que mi inglés. Okay. Sí? Yeah. Bueno. This character, uh, Nacho, has uh, these different parts of himself. He wants to be a man of God. And he also really wants to be part of the, you know, the excitement of, of uh, lucha libre. And he also is in love with this nun that's that's forbidden. He can't do that. So he's got all these different parts inside of himself, and he's in, in war with himself. And it's a really interesting uh, character to play. And how do you feel missing that? <laughs> how do I feel? <laughs> I feel like I'm almost naked. I think I would rather be naked. I'm very embarrassed, but that's why I know this is going to be a very funny film. Because whenever I'm embarrassed, that's always my best work. You hear, dude? Crack comes in, you're like this, and then I want you to turn around with your eyes closed and back up against the neck. It's like preparatory for the job. So, just take it easy and slow. And then, his rise and then maybe even start to do like wings out. How did he dive? He, he did with his hands up there. Right. Keep your back up against him. Like this? Sure. Or like this? Like that. Do it like that. Do it like that. All right, let's shoot it. Okay, fine. Camera's ready. Here we go. Okay, come on, Lista. Camera's ready. Oh. No vemos su cinturón, entonces. No lo vemos. Sí. And See if you can see this. Hey, what's up? What's going on? Ow! Ah! Ah! <laughs> 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 Legendary egg scene. Yeah, we'll just we'll land it. I don't know what's yeah. better, take one or take two. Yeah. We'll shoot the pelican here too. It's an embarrassment of riches. <laughs> They're both so darn funny. And if you don't think I'm a good actor, just know this. The egg is actually delicious. It's some pudding and some maple syrup. I could drink a gallon of it. You watch the movie. Check it out. It doesn't look like it tastes good then. Acting. Dude, that thing was an empty box and go look what they did to it. It'll blow your mind. It's better than any Santa movie I've ever seen. And there's the man who made it all happen. Gideon Ponte, mi amor. Bueno, esta es la casa de Don Ramón. Don Ramón es un manager de lucha libre mexicano. Y la idea es tener una casa como esta, con un poco de humor, con excesos y mostrando como todo lo grandioso que quiere hacer una persona que trabaja en esto. Desde un principio me hizo sentir muy cómodo y me hizo sentir confortable eh, trabajando a su lado. ¿no? A veces todavía despierto y no puedo creer que esté trabajando con él. <risa> pretty intense scene. 
facing off with the Indian dude. He's got a knife. Things could get ugly. Me and my compadre are ready for anything. Oye, ese coche azul, hay que invertir esos coches. Ya está, señor, ya está. Charlie Romero. It might have been a cool shot, except that yeah, check the, check the game. Yeah. got some corn on the lens. Extra, action, extra, and action! You can you can take the bling away from the man, but you can't take the man away from the bling. I don't know what that means. What is the bling? Bling. Joyas. Riquezas. Bling. Bling. No, blink. Blink. Si tienes muchas joyas, que siempre estás llevando como oro y Yeah, yeah, yeah. Para que todo el mundo vea, se llama bling. No, blink. Bling. 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 Just kidding. Bling. Ah, bling. 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 You think it's funny or what? Oh man. You can take the bling away from the man. But you can't take the man away from the bling. Oh, that's cool. Vamos, let's shoot, no? Right now we're going to shoot a piece with her dolly grip, Kimba. He's got a line which he, our DP Javier has been rehearsing with him all, all week. And the line is, excuse me, they are ready for you now. And we're going to see what he does right now. Acción. Excuse me. They are ready for you now. That's it. Bien, es un rap, gracias. Es un rap, gracias a todos. Muy bien, a ver, trabajado. Un poco nervioso, pero lo hice más o menos. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Big, 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 big
apoio. Sound right, boy. Last cutters. Don't be shy. Check them glass cutters out. I just realized what went wrong on that on that last take. I forgot to fill my body with nutrients. You go with a peanut butter and jelly on corn tortilla. <laughs> now you're talking about a good egg. I can feel the nutrients flowing through my bloodstream. It'll be some of the best acting I've ever done. <laughs> Peanut butter and jelly, corn tortilla. Oh. <laughs> Delicioso. Gourmet. Perfecto. No <laughs> veo cuisine. Okay, standing by, prenidos. I need to get the peanut butter and jelly out of the caca. Out of the caca. Exactly. Okay, give it to me. Thank you. And then that one goes on the corners. Yes. And now this one. It doesn't taste good. Do they have those baby wipes in like a better flavor? Okay. I'm gonna look into that for you. That's it, let's do it. Listo, silencio por favor. And action. Cut, cut, cut corte, corte. And what I realized also when I first saw one of the edits was that it was really going to appeal to like the Napoleon crowd because it shares something. And I was wondering, what does it share? I mean, what is it? And I think in the end, it's it's a Jared Hess movie, and that's what makes it so. I don't know. That's what makes it so fun. Okay, I'm Ana de la Reguera. I'm from Veracruz, Mexico. And we are here at the Nacho Libre set. So, um, I play Incarnation, Encarnacion. I'm a nun, and I'm happy working with you guys. Today is last Jack's last day, so I'm very, I'm very sad that I'm not gonna see him again. You know. Where's Jack? Where's Jack? Hey, chicos, chicos, dónde está Jack? Necesitamos a Jack muy pronto.
Jack's last shot of the movie. Oh, we haven't finished yet. for us. He's looking. Look, he's checking it. Clean one. Get clean, dude. Dude, yeah, that's a good shot. Hey, what's up? I'm Jack Black on the set of Nacho Libre. Nacho Libre! Now, I know a lot of you are asking, how come he's not wearing his Nacho Libre mask? Nacho! Nacho! Well, the answer is, it would mess up my sweet Nacho Libre hairdo. And you're gonna get a sweet look behind the scenes of Nacho Libre. Ready, and roll sound. You're getting a snake pig. And action! You're about to witness something raw, something outrageous, something never before seen. Nickelodeon Movies presents Jack Black Unmasked. And we're following him everywhere around the set of Nacho Libre. From the trailer to the wrestling ring. We're there. Hola, como esta usted? I'm Jack Black. We're just starting a movie today called uh, Lu Nacho Libre. I forgot what it's called for a second. I am Nacho. Almost all of the Mexican luchadores are completely hairless on the body, so I'm gonna get waxed right now. It's actually rather pleasant. No es problema. See, a lot of people would say, getting waxed? Oh, that's like a girl, let me tell you. I don't know if there's anything quite as manly as uh, withstanding this intense pain. <laughs> From Jared and Jerusha Hess, the creators of Napoleon Dynamite, and Mike White, the writer of the School of Rock, comes the story of Nacho Libre. Nacho is a cook who cares for hundreds of orphans and unfortunately feeds them slop. How come we can't ever have just like a salad? Everybody hates my cooking, and I say, it's not my cooking, it's the ingredients. You have a responsibility to these children. I know. Nacho dreams of becoming something more. He dreams of becoming a luchador. Today, I saw a man in town. People were throwing daisies at him and giving him goodies. As a masked wrestler, he could make plenty of money for the orphans becomes my mission to like get some money to make some good food for the children. If we win, we get 200 pesos! So he teams up with this guy. And together they become the tag team, Nacho and Esquilito. You can make the stallion. I'll take the pony. I can wrestle him, but you are tall and fast like a gazelle. You can do it. They look pretty good, right? Oh. Oh. Well, maybe not. These guys have a lot to learn before they taste any glory. Take it easy. Ha, Nacho! How's it going? I'm Jack Black on the set of Nacho Libre. Today's a big day because I'm wrestling. We got a full audience out there. They'll be watching me. I feel like I look pretty good in my outfit. That's the main thing. Self-confidence. I do have to keep clenched. I feel like I'm almost naked. I'm a little bit pear-shaped. It's right around here that is my concern. But that's just gold. That's what sells tickets. JB in that funny looking costume. Cut. Catch all. Lucha Libre. And now, a brief history of Lucha Libre, otherwise known as Vast Mexican Wrestling. Lucha Libre is one of the most watched sports in the world. 
It all started in America in the 1930s, but soon became a popular pastime with our friends south of the border, Mexico. Lucha Libre literally means free fight, and those luchadors don't hold back. They thrill the crowd with their colorful costumes and high-flying moves. Most luchadors wear fantastic masks and have powerful-sounding names like The Stallion, Dynasty, or Ramses. The good guys are called Technicos. The bad guys are the Rudos. The luchadors of Lucha Libre are serious and seriously entertaining. Catch all. Yep, I'm pretty famous. But I couldn't have done it without the little people. Like my friend here, Darius. He plays Chancho. Chancho. Don't worry, I won't tell nobody. Darius is gonna show you a couple things around the set. Right? Yep. What's your favorite wrestling move? I have to say the Powerball. Me too, Powerball shake. <sighs> City on the set of Nacho Libre. Como estas? This is the wardrobe truck for the movie. This is Nacho's mask. He wears it in the ring. Nacho Libre! This is the grip truck. This is where everyone gets their hair and makeup done. This is craft service, you know, for snacks. What's today's lunch? For lunch today, we have the chicken with vegetables. <laughs> this is the wrestling ring. Action! These are the extras. That's Mike White and Jack Black. You wrote me a bigger part? You're like the third or fourth lead in the movie. You can have a bigger part. Come on, give me some more lines. <laughs> cool, cool. I'm here in the ring with Ramses, the evil villain in Natural Libre. Ramses is the number one. Pretty big. Yep, just put him on the grease. Jack, what's your favorite wrestling move? The slap of death. The real stuntmen from the movie are right behind me. Can you show me how to do that? That's gonna happen! This is Jared Hesseter, the director of Nacho Libre. Behind me, they're filming one of the scenes. Nacho's gonna get his face smashed into some watermelon. Nacho! Nacho! Cut. Cut it. Back again with a brief history of Lucha Libre. Luchadors have lots of strange rituals and superstitions that they adhere to. Did you know when a wrestler is unmasked in the ring, he loses much of his power? Some luchadors never take off their masks. Never, ever, ever. The legendary luchador El Santo was even buried with his mask on. Now that's dedication. I want to tell you about the stunts in the movie. We've got a lot of stunts. Scary hairbrain stuff. A lot of crazy stuff. Some of it I can't do by myself. Send in the stunt man. Check it out. A lot of crazy stuff was done during the filming of Nacho Libre. Like Jack filling his nose with bean curd and then blowing it all over the place. Or wearing a dress made of birds. These little guys did a good job. A couple of them were a little extra flappy. They smell a little bit like bird pee. The legendary egg scene. The egg is actually delicious. It's some pudding and some maple syrup. I could drink a gallon of it. You watch the movie. It doesn't look like it tastes good then. Acting. For the more dangerous scenes, they called in the professionals, the stuntmen. He's gonna jump off the cliff. Yeah, I'd lie him if I said I wasn't a bit freaked out. I mean, it's a big hit. Not to be outdone, Jack Black wanted a piece of the action. I don't want to brag, but I've been told that I'm a natural. I was really surprised. He's actually very, very physical. I've actually been amazed throughout this whole thing how much of the stunt work he's done. <laughs> We actually have to curb his enthusiasm a little bit because he really does want to get in and do it all himself. Did you get it? I lost control and then tipped over. I rolled clear of the wreckage. But as for all great stuntmen, injury was waiting just around the corner. 
He actually dove into the crowd and into some stunt people that hit the ground. I got a few stitches here. I dove too far, apparently. Landed on some metal chairs, hit my head. But, you know, that's part of the job. You get hurt, you gotta pick yourself up, get in there and do the job. Ah, that's all! You like my costume? Thank you. You know, there's a lot of wrestlers in this movie. I'm not the only one. I get my butt kicked big time by a lot of different wrestlers. They are big, stinky, and ready to go. Check them out. Nacho tangles with a crazy cast of characters throughout the film, and some of them will scare your tights right off. For instance, Los Duendes. These subterranean life forms have been known to make screeching noises as they chew on their opponents. Then there's Los Hermanos Galindo. These Rudos, or bad guys, are actually cousins. Los Hermanos Galindo often use their belts to whip opponents, which is illegal, by the way. That burly fellow is Silencio. He's a bad guy of Viking ancestry, and he loves throwing people. Next are some of the good guys, Paradise and Sage. These fraternal twins are best known for their high-flying jumps. Finally, there's Ramses. He's the current champion and Nacho's biggest opponent. He also likes to oil up before every match. Yuck. All right, now you know who to stay clear of. Nacho! I think I got a little bug or something. I'm on the set with Jared. We're doing this scene in a bus. And I go, dude, let's just do one take and then I gotta go to the bathroom. Something's bubbling down there. He's like, okay, no problem, one take. And then I was like, dude, I'm going to the bathroom now. No takes. I'll do the take after I go to the bathroom. And I run out of the bus. It's humiliating. But you know, that's what the movie business is all about. The show must go on. Then I go into the bus, we do a take. Some of the best acting I've ever done. It's just the way it goes. Turn off camera. So there you have it. Everything you ever wanted to know about Nacho Libre. And maybe a couple of things that you didn't want to know. Bottom line, it takes a lot to fill the tights of a famous luchador. Especially when you have a cause as worthy as a needy orphanage and a certain lady friend to impress. Where's your robe, Ignacio? It was stinky. But these are my recreation clothes. They look expensive. Thank you. From the first day of filming to the final Battle Royale, Jack Black was one dedicated Lucha Libre, uninhibited, unafraid, and unmasked. Hey, y'all. Thanks a lot for partying with me. It's been a blast. Take it easy. Adios. Cut camera. End of show. Stop recording. Go. Stop it. Seriously, stop it. thing that I'm most proud of of this film is um, before we even went to Jared, when we heard the idea, we at Nickelodeon were really clear that we wanted to shoot it in Mexico. We wanted to shoot it with the amazing Mexican crews that are down here. They have a wonderful film community. We wanted to cast Mexican actors. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's great to come back to Mexico and work again with my crew, the crew that I've worked with before when I started my career. And these guys rock. These guys are an amazing crew. And shooting in Oaxaca and shooting with these people and these extras. You know, there's so much heart and so much depth and complexity to this culture. Jared entiende muy bien lo que es la idiosincrasia de, de los latinoamericanos. No se entiende muy bien, entonces ha hecho una excelente mancuerna con todo el club. Todo el club lo adora, se siente súper a gusto trabajando con él. Este, hace una experiencia buenísima. Buenísima, es 
ese es el mejor equipo que, con que he trabajado. Es, es increíble. Todo, es, ya somos como una familia. Va a ser muy triste cuando terminamos el jueves. Porque, sí. Ha sido una experiencia magnífica para mí. Quiero regresar a México para okay. hacer otra película. Hello, I'm Jack Black, and you're watching Movie Phone. Today I'm here with Hector Jimenez, who plays Escalito in the movie Nacho Libre. We're going to be interviewing each other, uh, asking each other some of your questions and some of our own. So please enjoy. I'm going to begin the interview now with my first question. What was it like working with Jack Black? <laughs> I have a good time. You know what? I, I feel very comfortable working with you because I think we feel each other, you know? You make some um, moves or you make something uh, on the rehearsal and I know right away what I have to do, you know? And make the opposite uh, on, the, on the scene. Thank you. How did you prepare to play a luchador? I uh, did some training, some luchador wrestling training here in Los Angeles with a uh, with an ex-wrestler. He, he uh, used to wrestle all over the world, in Japan and Mexico and the United States. And uh, he taught me all the moves, and uh, he taught me how to fall down and how to headlock, and uh, he just got me in shape. I got really sweaty. Because you, you surprised me the first day when, when, when I saw you in Oaxaca, you already have all those moves. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, I did do some judo when I was younger. Oh, really? So I, I had some skills already. Okay. Thank you for the compliment. I thought you were a fantastic wrestler yourself. But I never did it before. <laughs> do you find difficult working in a cape and ties? It was, a, it was a little bit hard at first because I was embarrassed. Because, you know, I'm shirtless and wearing the tight, skin-tight uh, pantaloons. But then I realized I'm only embarrassed because I'm afraid people are going to laugh at me. But that's good. <laughs> yeah. It's good. I want them to laugh at me. Yeah, after the first day, I was comfortable. I liked it. I have the same problem with my chores. I feel like <laughs> I'm almost naked. And, but at the end of the film, I love those chores. Yeah. I think it's going to be my lucky chores. Unscripted? Hold on. This is me. Unscripted. If we do a sequel, Nacho 2, what will happen in that movie? Mm, I don't know. Do you think maybe we could go to Japan? Wow, this could be crazy. <laughs> it's time to start thinking about it. Oh, really? Yeah, if we're going to do it, we should probably start writing it right away. And wrestling with Japanese wrestlers? They have Lucha, Lucha Libre in, I heard. in Japan. Right? I heard that. They, 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 uh, and also I heard that the wrestlers from Japan come to Mexico City to get training. Oh, yeah. Were you pleased with your physique in the film? My physique, you know, I had to gain weight for the film because uh, I'm very muscular and trim, usually. <laughs> but for the good of the film, I ate a lot of extra burritos and tacos, and I was pleased. I was pleased with the final result. I think I, think I look pretty funny in the costume. I do have to keep clenched. I have to keep it pretty squeezed, or else I don't feel so confident. Because that, I don't know. I'm a little bit pear-shaped. It's right around here that is my concern. But that's just gold. That's what, that's what sells tickets. A lot of people say wrestling is fake. How do you feel about it? I don't think so. I think they have some choreographies, and, and, and they have, um, 
someone put in a headlock, you have to know how to go away from that headlock because if you make a wrong move, uh, you can hurt by yourself. I, I was really focusing on the training mm -hmm. uh, and remembering where I had to fall or where I put my arm um, because it's hard. Uh, if you are not focusing, you can hurt by yourself. It's true. I got hurt above my eye. I remember. And I thought I was focusing. It's not just choreographed, though. Also, sometimes it's improvised, right? Like when you get in a headlock yeah. and the guy will whisper, I'm going to kick you in the face and you go around against the world. <laughs> you know, you got you to be ready to think fast on your feet. Yeah. That's, I and I think probably they, sometimes when they are wrestling, they, they really get mad. Yeah. And, they, and, they, and, and that became for real. Uh, yeah. You know? I mean, it's a performance. It is. But those wrestlers are real athletes and could really kick your ass if they wanted to. <laughs> if they wanted to, for sure. Yeah. How did you mustache change your rapport with the ladies? I don't know if the mustache made me more popular with the ladies or less. I think the mustache was very attractive in 1970, and now it's pretty much only, only police officers that I know with mustaches. <laughs> you know, I got, uh, I got engaged uh, to my wife while we were um, making the movie, so maybe, maybe it worked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hector, would you ever consider a career in wrestling, lucha libre? in Mexico, and if so, what would your stage name be? <laughs> uh, maybe it could be Torito. Chorito. Torito. 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 Is that little bull? It, that, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But a little one. So would you have like horns on your costume and stuff? Uh, on my max? Yeah, could be. Why not? Like a little bull? Yeah, like maybe a little like bull. Maybe like a little uh, nose ring? Yeah, here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What was your favorite dish in Oaxaca? You like the food very well in Oaxaca. Yes. Um, I had a delicious dish. I can't remember what it was called, but it was chicken in black mole with fried bananas, plantains. It was uh, delicioso. Delicioso? Yeah, si, delicioso. Muy delicioso. That means delicious in Spanish. I never tried the cricket. I tried the crickets. I had a cricket uh, pie. I think it was like a cricket pot pie. And uh, didn't really like it that much. Yeah, tastes weird, no? But I think it's an acquired taste. If I had maybe 10 more, I would start to like it. <laughs> I put away the legs. Yeah, yeah, pull away the legs. Yeah, because that tastes weird on the mouth. One time I saw a guy eating a burrito all crickets, just cricket burrito. <laughs> mm. Did you get sick during the film? Not really sick, but um, I got a little bug, and uh, I had the diarrhea, okay? There it is. I didn't really want to tell you, but yes, I did. But uh, the show must go on, and I, I kept on filming. You can see that, though, on my podcast. I did talk about it extensively there, much to my chagrin. I run out of the bus holding butt cheeks together. I go, where's the nearest restroom? They go, uh, back at base camp? And I know that's a 10 minute drive. I'm like, does anyone have some papel, some paper? And there's a dude, yeah, I'll go get some. I said, Ben Cooley, meet me in the forest. I'm going out there now, bring me some paper. What's your favorite buddy movie of all times and why? My favorite buddy movie? Oh, uh, I really liked Silver Streak, uh, yeah. That was my favorite, probably, because uh, those guys are the funniest. Did you ever see Silver Streak? Oh, no, not, not already. Richard Pryor and, and Gene Wilder. It was 1978 or something, and uh, they were on a, a runaway train. Okay. And um, those guys were a great team, great comedy duo. All right. Thanks for watching Movie Phone. Thanks for sending in your questions. It's been me, Jack Black, and Hector Jimenez, Nacho Libre, June 16th. All right. Thank you, thank you. Wow, what a production. All these cameras and audience. And but Hector, you're going to be looking no, at this me. this is all you get. Uh, <laughs> and looking right here, you guys? Yeah, good.